Welcome back to the shop today, guys. Today we are back working on our CNC plasma cutter slash router. Uh, and today we are gonna install our rack and pinions for our gantry and Z-axis doohickey madoodle over there. So stick with me here and let's get something done. So previous video, uh, we were working on our rack and pinions on the side. So I got those all mounted. Those are working well. I don't have the gears on these motors yet because I, like I said in the previous video, I only, I forgot to order three and I only ordered one. So I'm using that to mock everything up on, I did it with both sides and I'm going to do the same with the gantry. And, uh, I got to order two more of those those gears coming. But uh, anywho, the uh, rack and pin racks on the sides are all mounted and done, and uh, they turned out pretty sharp, guys. Worked really, really well. I finally bought myself. I don't know if I mentioned this in the other video, but I finally bought myself one of these countersink bits. A little pricey. This one was like twenty six bucks, but you know that just oh that worked really, really well. I kind of did the same thing here on the front of the Z-axis here, this plate. I countersunk all these, but all I did was use a bigger drill bit. Problem with that is that that, the point of a drill bit doesn't match the angle of those screws that go in there. So the chances of them loosening up are pretty high, but a little bit of Loctite, she'll fit just fine. Or JB Weld, whatever it comes to. So right now I got my top gantry or my gantry rack just C-clamped on here right now. Some beer can shims. I have that sitting right up against our angle iron. I have it shimmed so that way it's not relying on this uh, angle iron to be square. Uh, so I'm gonna drill all these holes, get them tapped, get this thing mounted, and then we can start worrying about all of this jazz and what we're gonna be doing under here. I got some paper templates I started. Is that where I'm going to end up? I don't know, but uh, it's a start. So I'm going to get to drilling and tapping. I'll get these mounted. Uh, one thing I am going to do a little different in this video, I'm going to do more time lapse and more sped up video instead of just me sitting here explaining everything I'm doing. I think I talk too much in my videos. Um, and if you agree, let me know. Or if you like the times where I explain a bunch of random stuff that you probably don't care about, if you like that, let me know that too. And maybe I'll go back to doing that. But I'll try to not talk so much, show you more... Uh, video and not so much chatty chatty. So let's get to it here, boys. So those plates uh, turned out pretty good. Uh, they are sitting right here. Well, one of them is. I have two of them just like this. But uh, it uh, turned out okay for a guy with just a, a table saw and some aluminum. Don't try that at home, guys. It does work, though. Don't try it at home. Uh, it gets real messy. But uh, not a bad fit up. And I threw it on the belt sander to kind of square it up a little bit. Uh, not perfect, but it'll be okay for what I need. This recess right here, 
this little cutout here is just so I can clear that bearing in case somebody's asking. Just another one of those things that I didn't quite think through all the way, but that's okay. So we're gonna, ah, uh, shoot, you know what? I think this whole Z axis has to come apart now. It does. Shoot, well, anyways, that's part of the beast. I'm going to uh, tear off that Z axis, tear it all apart, make some measurements while it's on here, and then uh, figure out how I'm gonna mount these bad boys. Well guys, I broke a tap. Here's the remnants of it. I sanded it flat because I tried for about 10-15 minutes to get that guy out of here and she wasn't coming. Uh, that's what I get for going too fast, not enough lube, and just not taking my time. So like any uh, normal person, I think two bolts will work just fine. So we're not going to worry about that one. We're just going to sand it flush, hide it behind the z-axis, and no one will know except you and me. Sound good? Good. So I'm going to get to finish tapping these holes and then we'll see how she looks. Well, guys, this is turning out pretty good. Uh, these guys are on here and these are rock solid. So it's turning out to work pretty good. So I'm going to work on the bottom plate now, which will just be a plate sitting right in here. And there's no way I'm going to get that perfect. So don't judge. But so far, it's looking pretty slick. Almost looks a bit overbuilt, uh, if you ask me. Half inch might have not have been necessary, but half inch is nice because you can get a quarter inch bolt. You can drill quarter inch into here real nice. So anyway, I'm going to work on that bottom plate now. We'll see how that looks. Well guys, finished that bottom piece and you don't get much better than this. Now it's going to be hard to do with one hand because it is so, uh, so close, so bear with me here, but it does fit, trust me, trust me guys, it fits, I've had it in here, hold on, I'll get it. Oh, come on. You're embarrassing me. Let's go. There we go. Look at that. Look at that fit. Not bad for a guy with a table saw and a belt sander. But we got her. Let's see if she's... Yeah, she's pretty tight. She even kind of stays there. Not bad, if you ask me. And just a little bit of recess cuts in the back corners there to clear those uh, bearings. I'm going to put two bolts coming through the back. Two bolts to the side, two bolts to the side, and this thing will be rock solid. So I finished uh, making up that bottom plate. Uh, I did a lot of, most of it, all of it off camera. My uh, daughter was in here with me and I wanted to keep her off camera for obvious reasons. But, so here it is. Are the slots straight? No, but will it work? Yes, I hope. So this guy, oh, and I have those holes drilled there. I just gotta worry about the back ones. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet. This guy fits in there and some bolts go into there. So I'm going to get that tightened down and then we'll check the motor fitment, which I've kind of already checked the motor fitment. I know what'll work, but I just got to make sure that those, that these slots are long enough to fully engage the teeth of the motor into the rack and pinion. So I'm going to get that on and we'll see what I do next. Stick with me. Well guys, it's looking pretty snazzy. I just got it sitting up there. This is kind of gives you an idea what I was going after. Uh, should work fairly well. I've got good engagement. Uh, I didn't get the teeth down far as, as far down as I'd like, but I'm gonna have to just deal with that in life. Should be enough for what I'm doing. But one thing again, again, when you don't plan everything through is tightening those back bolts on this motor is gonna be a handful. 
Now, I think I have long enough Allen keys here, pardon the mess, but I got long enough Allen keys that I can kind of get this guy set in behind there and spin from the top. So it should work, uh, not uh, the best for adjustment, but really how often are you adjusting this? Once you get that in there, you know, it's probably not gonna be a big deal. Once it's tightened down, probably not gonna ever take it off for a long time. So there's that. What else do I need to do now? Now I need hardware, I need bolts uh, because of the bolts on the front here, these guys. I need those to be countersunk, like uh, those bolts that we've, like this, like this one right here. I need to countersink these as well because those are gonna be underneath rails and never accessible ever again. But that's just how I did it. Should have done a little differently, but hey, teach their own. And then for these ones, these top six, I'm actually gonna put two more here. I have spots for five across here, but I'm this one's covered by the motor. So I'm just gonna do, so what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bolts up here. I'm gonna do those cap screw style. By cap screw style, I mean like this. Only the right size. Looks a little, looks professionally done when it's like that. And I'm gonna replace these guys all with bolts that are similar. Uh, just that way it all kind of matches. A smart guy would tear this whole gantry apart right now and sandblast all the aluminum or brush all the aluminum and make it all uniform. But I don't know if I want to do that. Because if I do that, then I got to take the rest of the table apart and paint it. Because that's coming up soon, guys. We're getting close. We're getting so close that, get this, guys, I have wire in my Amazon, Amazon cart right now. Because sooner or later, we're going to have to start uh, teaching ourselves how to do wiring, which is uh, probably more uh, more scary for me than doing all this stuff. But I'm gonna get that motor mounted. Uh, that way I don't ever have to touch it again. That one, I might leave that sprocket on that one so I don't have to take that off. It's easier doing the other ones, taking the other ones off to put the sprockets on once I get those, those are on order as well. Because like I said in my last video, I ordered one instead of three by accident. And then I gotta get the hardware. Yeah, I gotta get the hardware to flush mount all that stuff and then I can put the gantry back together. And once the gantry's back together, then uh, then we're cooking. Then I'm looking into cable tracks, which is also in my Amazon cart. Get ready to live, boys. If you don't know what cable track is, it'll make sense once I get it. But I might save that for the next video, maybe. We'll see how far or how quick I can get the hardware to finish the ZX. I'll finish that in this video probably. I'll try to, unless I end it here. But I don't plan on ending it here. So I'm gonna get some hardware, get some hardware, get the Z axis all put back together. And then these motors, this one and this one, the top one that you don't see here right now, I can get that installed for good and never have to take these off again until until unless I want to paint it or scuff it up and whatever, but I doubt that'll happen. It's September already, October's coming. Once the snow flies, then I can't really paint in here. I can't keep it hot enough. So I might almost have it raw till next year, but we'll one step at a time. For right now, I'm going to get some hardware and we're going to put that Z axis back together. So stick with me here. Got some bolts guys and bam, look at that. Looking pretty snazzy. Remember how I was saying I was going for lightweight with the aluminum? It's not lightweight. Nope, she's pretty heavy, but we're gonna send it and just see what happens. Hopefully these motors have enough jam. That's what she looks like from the back. We got our motor on there. We got our sprocket on there. And this guy still moves fairly nice. Yeah, she's pretty, pretty nice unit. So once I got this plate on, this front back on, then uh, she seemed to even out a little bit on the weight. She actually rolls a little bit better now. Kind of evens out the weight so it's not so teeter-totter. But anyways, that's where this end video is going to end, guys. Guys, I have 200 subscribers. Thank you so much. Uh, that makes my day. Um, I was hoping to get at 200 before the end of the year, and I'm super pumped that I have. And I thank each and every one of you guys. Yeah, I don't know how else to thank you, but say thank you. But uh, 
No, that's awesome to see. So now we're going for the big three. Let's go for the 300. I'm really excited. But anyways, thank you guys for stopping by. Next couple videos will be about this uh, CNC. We'll keep going. We will get to the Bronco yet. Just you wait. But for now, this is where I'm going to end it. So again, guys, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I'd really appreciate it. And hit that like button. Uh, and if you don't want to hit the like button, hit the thumbs down. That's fine. But tell me why, because I'd like to know. That's the only way I can get better. So anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.